Welcome, everybody. Thank you for being here today. We're going to have a good time getting into the Word of God. Father, thank you that we can come before you. Thank you for just everything that you do. It's so good to be with you, to be in your presence, to love on you, for having you love on us. I pray that your word would be quickened in our hearts and our minds today, that we can go from faith to faith, glory to glory. We love and honor you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. So today I'm going to start out. I have notes we're teaching on the Holy Spirit. We'll get into that and we'll tie that together. Um, I don't have much of a voice today, so we're gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really try to... I'm going to try to be chill. It ain't going to work, but I'm just going to do my best. And, you know, it's, it's interesting because I was battling on what to teach today whether to stick with my series or doing whatever. And, um, uh, and, and I just really wanted to teach on faith and do some things like that. And, you know, my life, my life is an open book. I just really try to make sure that I stay transparent. I don't tell you everything because a lot of people couldn't handle some stuff, but um, not that I have anything to hide. It's just uh, you'd feel, you, you know, whatever. Um, but this week, I, I, I found a tumor on my, my, my throat again. And before, that uh, took out my voice just in the same way that it did last time and all that kind of stuff. And, and so what do you do when you get into a trial? And that's what I want to start with today because without the aid of the Holy Spirit, you don't win. But with the aid of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, you can't lose. Uh, it's already shrinking, doing all that kind of stuff. It's already great, everything, boom. And... Um, you know, so I'm on the winning side of all of this and just, you know, doing all that kind of stuff. So, you know, like visitors, I'm not going to die. I, I don't do that well. And, uh, you know, so don't worry about it. You know, I'll be around for a while. Uh, I got these jeans from my dad. We thought he was going to die six or seven times. He never does. You know, it's amazing. And, uh, you know, contrary to my belief, I think you should take care of your body, eat right, exercise, those types of things. Like already this morning, I, I worked out, I did a sauna, I got into the Word, did all that kind of stuff before I even got to church today. Uh, my dad ate sugar, I'm sure, and, uh, and, and did nothing healthy at all, zero, not, not one thing. And uh, he is proof you can live to 94 on sugar. And uh, yeah, so... So with that, if you don't know him, you can say hi to him after the service. He's right here. Uh, he's, he's going in the rapture. There is, you know, like, yeah. It's kind of like Methuselah. If, when he dies, the Lord, you know, whatever, uh, the flood, you know, anyway. Okay, never mind. I have to explain Methuselah. I'm not going to do that. Okay. So how do you go through trials? And I just really... Um, the Lord really got on my case in a really good way. You know, every time you, if you go through a trial, you know, the Bible says to count it all joy when you fall into various trials. This is James chapter one. It says count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that testing of your faith produces patience and let patience have its perfecting work that you might be mature and complete, lacking nothing. And so what do you do with that? You count it joy. You look at it. Why? Because now I'm going to put my faith to something. I'm going to come out better. I'm going to come out stronger. And the Lord really challenged me in my faith and things like this. And not, not in a way that like, hey, you're doing bad. It's just like, hey, we can go to this another level. You can be at another level. And so I'm just going to share with you. Can't do what I did first service because I don't even know what I did uh, other than a few thoughts. But I just wanted to share with you what... Uh, how do you go through a trial? You get something like this. And, you know, anytime you go through a trial, it doesn't really matter what it is. One of the first things Satan tries to do is fear. Right. Lose your job, fear. You get in a fight with your spouse, fear. You know what I mean? You get whatever, fear. You do something stupid, fear. You know, I mean, it's all this other kind of stuff. But guess what? Satan is, is the God of fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear, a bit of power and love and a sound mind. You cannot allow fear to be a part of who you are. You resist fear like you would anything else, like a, like a, snake trying to bite your kids, man. I, I don't know. You just, you fight fear. You resist it. And how do you fight fear? You have to know truth. You have to know truth. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. You got to stay close to God. So when you're reacting to fear, you're far from God. 
You're close to God. There is no fear. It's not an indication like if you experience fear or something like this, just deal with it. It's not a matter of, oh, I'm away from God. No, it's going to come. It's like a temptation. It's like, you know, whatever. It's like somebody throwing something on you. It's not like you did something necessarily. You know, Satan creates a situation that he throws. I was, I was going to like undo this and like go, what? And get you all wet. And it'd be like that. You didn't have a choice. It just got on you. I, I should have. I so should have done that. I would have loved it. You may not have. Anyway. <laughs> But here's the deal, you wouldn't have had a choice. It was thrown upon you. And so just fear in itself is not sin and all this other kind of stuff. But what do I do with it when it comes? I need to analyze the situation and go, I'm not yielding it to it because it will take me away from God. Yep. And so, you know, in those trials, you need to come into a place of faith. And, and faith comes by what? No, stop, stop. First service did really bad. So I'm just going to help you out so I don't get discouraged. So I feel like you're all just giants in the word, okay? Okay. This is Romans 10, 17. It says, faith, com-. you all say it with me. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Awesome. Praise God. So now we know fear is not the thing that I need to respond to, but I need faith. And faith comes how? by hearing the word of God. And so I need to yield to the word. I need to know the word. You see, your faith cannot go beyond understanding the will of God. Faith begins where the will of God is known. Now you can cognitively understand what the Bible says, but not believe what it says. How do I know I believe what the Word of God says? The Word of God becomes the most logical thing for me to do. I know I have gone from cognitive faith to heart faith when I'm going to do what the Word of God says. Of course this will work. Amen? Now, most people, how do I want to say this in a nice way? I think very few people on earth throughout history, maybe 1% have actually walked in a faith that was pure. Like strong, like crazy. Now the people have done great things without having what I'm talking about. Jesus is the first example, perfect faith. There's a few people through history that have gotten close to that kind of faith, but very, very, very few. But what is the potential for every single one of us? Under the new birth, being born again, if we will completely, now this is a hard thing, I'm telling you, and I know, but if we'll completely surrender to Jesus and his word and his will, you, okay, this is what the Bible says, you can be conformed to the image of his son. Perfect faith like Jesus. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Most people that I talk to when they're going through a trial and I say, what scriptures are you standing on? And they barely throw out a half of scripture and, and you know, if I asked them to spell it, it would have been spelled wrong. Because, well, me too, but <laughs> the spelling part anyway, you know, but it's like, you know, it's like, okay, so this is what I know. You're not a person of faith because faith is measured by the word of God, knowing the word of God, doing the word of God, living the word of God. There's many people that know the Bible, but don't have faith. They're usually mean <laughs> and judgmental. There's, there's people I know that have done great things in the Lord and stuff like this. And they don't know a lot of the Bible. In fact, they, they know some of it, and they know some of it so well that they have accomplished great things in life. Joel Osteen, when he took over his dad's church, his dad was an amazing teacher of the Word of God like crazy. You should read his books. I recommend them. Joel, 
can't spell Ephesians, let alone find it. You know what I mean? And, and, and the Lord asked him to take over the church and look what happened. And he, this is his own testimony. He says, I learned as I went. I'm all of a sudden given this gigantic church. I just wanted to be on TV. I just wanted to run the sound and the lights and the, do all these things. And now I'm a pastor. And because of the anointing of God and because of the faith that he had and the few things that he lived and all this other kind of stuff, he was able to give what he had with faith and look at the amount of people that he's touched. I saw him in an auditorium. I shouldn't say these things out loud, especially on whatever, but anyway. I would have used just different scriptures than he used. Let me just put it that way. And I saw hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people got born again. And I said, I might know the word better than him, but I couldn't have done what he just did. And I wouldn't have got that response. Who am I to judge him? He's got more people born again in this one service than I have in the last five years. So faith is based on how much word I live. So as I was going through this trial and, and, then, and, and just kind of really working through this and stuff and getting into the word of God, the Lord really challenged me on some scriptures and putting these into practice in my life and where my faith was. And it's not that it was bad, but he says, let's go to that next level. You see, faith... Hebrews 11.1 1 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So if I'm going to be a person of faith, it's not like I, I, I can see it. Hey, there's a keyboard over there. You know what I mean? But through the word of God, I can go in my future, there's a keyboard. That's a terrible example, but... The word of God starts to paint a picture of the kingdom of God being manifest in your life. And it becomes so real to you that it is a substance that cannot be denied and you're bold and you're strong and you declare it. I remember when our son was in intensive care, they told us he was going to die. We just, Colleen and I got, got it in our heart, man. We just knew it. We just knew he was going to come out. We knew he was going to be okay. He actually works at the church now. You know, it's just like, you know, he's alive. But they were telling us he was going to die. Well, we prayed and confessed and did the word and meditated in it. We had the substance of that in our heart. And I remember a good friend of mine coming up and go, let's pray. Let's, you know, why? Because we saw his dad healed of cancer by doing the warfare that we needed to do on his behalf. And we saw his dad healed of cancer. He goes, let's do it. Let's fight. I'm coming up. I'm coming up, man. Canceled all my appointments. Bam, I'm coming up. We're going to pray. We're going to battle this thing. Your, your son's going to live. I go, dude, I already got it. You don't have to pray. And he's going, no, no, man. He's, you know, whatever. You know, he's out in tubes. Boom. He's in a coma. Boom. They don't expect him to wake up. It's just all bad, naturally. I said, don't pray. Don't pray. Just come take me out for lunch. I'm hungry. People would call. We're praying. I go, you can stop. What do you mean? Your son's in a tense of You can stop praying. I already got it. Don't pray for something that's already gotten. Start thanking God that it's coming to pass. It's all good. You can thank for me. You want to give me money? Yeah, that'd be great. Amen. You know, this is going to cost some bucks here. But, you know, hey, other than that, you don't have to pray anymore. He's healed. He's not healed. He's on life support. No, the problem is, is you don't have the faith. Why? Because you didn't do the battle for my son the way that I've done battle for my son. And I have already got the answer for it. Colleen and I were in complete agreement. We already had it. We had something they didn't have. We had a substance and evidence that nobody could see, right? But we had it. And so we were encouraging people not to pray because it would be stupid. Spend your time praying for somebody else. Because why pray for something you already have? That's how sure faith can be. What's the journey there? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
So, you know, of course, I feel a tumor or a lump on my throat, you know what I mean? It's boom, it's pressing into my vocal cords, I can't speak, I lose my voice a little bit, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? It's just what happened last time I had a tumor, and it was just like, no, Pfft, no, not going to happen. That's not the way this one goes down this time, man. So I started to get into the Word of God. This scripture really hit me. Uh, um, 1 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5, please. And, you know, looking at this, and it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Before, before I go into this, the Holy Spirit is the one who teaches us the word and brings revelation to us of the word of God. So I'm going to tie this into the Holy Spirit, what we've been talking to, okay? Because you cannot get faith without the Holy Spirit. You will get knowledge. With the Holy Spirit, you get faith. And literally, I've seen some people really strong in faith that weren't giants in being able to preach this word, but they got revelation from the Holy Spirit because of their relationship with him. And in those areas, we're able to grab onto the word of God and do it. You have the potential. I don't care if you can tell me where the address is. Just know what the word of God says and be able to apply it in your life and be able to do this with it. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. What is a stronghold? Anybody in this room? Yeah, and what was that? Believe in something, yeah. Believe in something so long that becomes a stronghold. Somebody back here? Something to hold you back. I love that. What was that? Okay, something you put in front of God, yes. Let me, let me just share with you how the definition has come to me. Any thought that I have that is stronger than God's word. Any thought that I have in my life that is stronger than God's word. Can I share with you? There can be a lot of those. A lot. Our world gets us so busy and gets us so tangled up and so out of this word. Come on, somebody. What's happening in the government? What's happening in the world? Trust me. I believe that we're... In the end times, I really do. I think there's a great awakening that's coming, the fifth one in the United States of America, which is going to touch the world. I believe that. I think we're going to be a part of it. That's just my personal conviction and belief. I also believe that we're in the end times. Prophetic things are coming to pass so fast. It's unbelievable. I think we've got the honor of being a part of that group. And I understand that every generation thought that they were in a time when the Lord was going to come back. So if we're deceived, let's just not let them down. And let's be one of that group too. Jesus is coming back. Amen. And, and here's the deal. What does that do for your life if you believe that he is even if we're not right what does it do for your life if you knew he was going to show up today if he if let me tell you this what what if i got a prophetic word hello jesus yeah oh you're showing up in 10 seconds great how many you would be repenting okay (laughs) that's the lord coming back you know what if we knew that he was going to show up today tomorrow this week would you change your life That's called repentance, and you should. You need to change the stronghold in your life that you're getting away with sin because of grace. Who asked him to preach today? I don't know. (laughs) So it goes on, and it says this, casting down all arguments. What kind of arguments would you have? All kinds of things. Anything contrary to this word. Is this okay, y'all? Anything contrary to... Is there anything arguing against this? All kinds of things in this world are arguing against this. Are you more full of the world than you are the word? Then you have a stronghold and there's arguments casting down the word of God. See, and it says this, and I'll tie it in if I, if I get really good at what I'm doing here. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So he calls these things high things. There can be, by, because most of what's happening in this world is is motivated by demonic forces that control governments and society and all this thing. The spirit of the Antichrist is in the world orchestrating things right now. He cannot win because of the church. We are the restraining force that stops him. The stronger we get, the less he wins. Amen. The more people that get saved and, and, and he filled with the Holy Ghost, praying in tongues. And I'm sorry if you don't believe in that. Jesus does. And so is the Holy Spirit. And I will help you to understand that. And and many of you got turned off because of weirdness. Um, well, I, I, I will explain the Holy Spirit to you as a best I can because he's not weird. He's super 
awesome, but he is supernatural and he will freak you out at times. Okay, he just does. You know what I mean? There's been times where I'm walking through a store or something, he gives me a word of knowledge for somebody and I'm going, what if I'm wrong? And you get afraid. Lord, this isn't a good time for me to give this word. I'm in a hurry. It's not time. It's not a good time for me to be giving this money away because I need it. The Holy Ghost will do all kinds of things to you. But he's always setting you up. He's setting you up to become more like Jesus. So don't look at any of it as, man, I did something wrong. You know, this whole thing happened to me. Big deal. Devil's trying to kill me. doesn't matter. I win. Of the long life, I'm satisfied. I got a destiny. And the whole thing that happened here brought me to another level of excitement and dedication and fired up for Jesus. So, okay, the last time it happened, I was excited to get out of here. So that's the difference between these two. I was going, nobody, nobody blames you if you died of cancer. Oh, I fought a good fight. He was a good man. Boom. And then you all would have forgot about me. That's what happens when people die. You're like, you're like gone. All right, no more. I was looking forward to getting with Jesus. Then I touched the wailing wall in Jerusalem, and the Lord says, uh, if you don't change your confession, you're going to die. You'll come be with me. We'll have a good time, but I won't be pleased. I'm not done with you. I was like, oh, now I've got to fight. <laughs> Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. What does that mean? We're just talking about the life of faith. This is the life of a regular believer. This is our life. This is the way we should live, folks. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. What would that look like? What would it look like having no thought that didn't glorify him? Huh? Can, that even, can we even do that? He wouldn't ask us to if we couldn't. Uh-huh. Yeah. The problem is, is American Christians are really weak. I've known Christians all, of, all over the world in many, many countries. I haven't been, obviously I haven't been all over the world, but I've been around the stupid thing. Known Christians all over the place. The strongest Christians, uh, for me, the strongest Christians that I've ever met are the ones that have the least. Man, we got social security. How does that happen? Well, they steal money from you, they poorly invest it, and then they give you a portion back. Okay, that's how that happens. Okay, and here's where my mind has to need get <laughs> It's true. Could they deny that? No, they could not deny that. Well, for me, I can get upset about that. Right? Is it worth my thought? Not worth it. Not worth it. Not worth my energy. Flat world people. They want you to be flat world people. I don't care. I don't care if it's flat or round. Because it has nothing to do with me living the life, bringing the kingdom, getting people saved, and living the life of God. Could it be interesting? Actually, I read some stuff that's kind of interesting. Stuff like that. You know what I mean? If you got some candy time for your mind, read whatever you want to, but don't let it consume you. Politics, man, this whole election thing. Half the world thought one thing and the other one thought the other thing. Half are happy and half are mad and half are like this and boom, boom. What do you know? They didn't take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Because we don't live for this world anymore. The, the, world, <laughs> the world I live in, the kingdom I'm from, doesn't shake, doesn't move. Might be flat, might be round. <laughs> don't care <laughs> I'm just going to enjoy being there <laughs> I 
like, it's amazing to me the things that go around. You know what I mean? Can you be passionate about this word? And I dare say that most Christians in America are not necessarily passionate about his word. Because we have it easy. Holy Spirit, where do I go from here? So you learned some things about faith. You learned about taking thoughts captive. You learned about that. Romans, okay, I'm just going to do a couple other scriptures. And I'm going to, Romans 12, 2. Can we bring that up? One and two. If you got one and two, that'd be great. I'll just quote it to you. There we go. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a what? Holy and acceptable to God, which is a reasonable service. Your bodies will drag you out of the word of God, the faith, and following the Holy Spirit faster than almost anything. Seriously. Your lust, your desire for things, you know, the works of the flesh, which you will read in Galatians 5, you do all these things, it drags you out of, out of the word of faith. Fear, all these other kind of things like this. And so he tells us to do this, and it's your reasonable service. In other words, fast, make your body submit, amen? You know what I mean? When you're lusting after somebody, move your eyes. You're lusting after somebody's stuff, move your eyes. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Politics make you mad, move your eyes. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Probably shouldn't be involved in politics if it does. Okay, go on. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How do I know the perfect will of God? And how do I become transformed, which means to be made into a whole new image? It comes to my mind. The word of God says, receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. I don't know where it's at, but it's in the Bible. It's in there somewhere. And for some reason, I can't think of the address right now, but that's okay. So when my mind gets into place where it's believing and acting on the word of God, everything in my life will change. Do you realize you cannot think poverty and think word? Who meets all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus? Wait a minute, I got to take that out of there if I'm going to fear about supply. Oh, wait a minute, what about, you know, kind of where Matthew 6, where the Lord, you know, kind of even talking about his Lord's prayer and all this other kind of stuff, and, he, you know, and he says, don't seek after these things, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So now for my increase, I have to seek God first. And all the things will be added to me. The wisdom of how to, find, how to invest, blah, 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 all these things. Why? Because God says he'll bless the works of your hands and he takes pleasure in the prosperity of his saints. And so if I take my thoughts captive to that, with long life I'm satisfied, doesn't matter what comes around, doesn't matter if they're the biggest plague in the world, China releases 2.0 of COVID, you know what I mean? And, and whatever, it doesn't really matter what it is. If I can trust and believe that with long life I'm satisfied, I'm going to press through and win the battle. Do I ever lose battles? People, gosh, folks, we're going to. There's going to be battles we lose. It just happens. Just fight to win. It just depends on where you're at. Maybe the battle is bigger than your faith. But when do you build your faith? Unfortunately, people try to learn to swim when the boat's sinking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. nowadays it's Google. How do I swim? You know what I mean? It's like, okay. Well, water's coming up to here. Oh, yeah, bad, yeah. <laughs> Learn to fight cancer before you get cancer. Learn to fight blah, 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 blah. Learn to prosper. How do you do that? You just start living the word of God just step by step by step. And as you're on that journey, God's grace and mercy will cover you on the things that you don't have yet. But what is my goal? To obey the word of God. Take every thought captive to your obedience to Christ. Look like Jesus. Imagine that. Look like Jesus. You get born again, you don't look like Jesus. I mean, seriously, man, you're over here like, like just super heathen. You get born again, you're super righteous, but nothing in your mind changed. There's a whole lot of walking out to do yet. Are you born again? Yeah, you could be spirit-filled. I was. I was born again, spirit-filled, like, like barely into the kingdom. You know what I mean? I just got it all at once, kind of. You know what I mean? <laughs> 
We're at the store one day. We're driving into Myers. I mean, this is how crazy stupid my flesh was. I was righteous, born again, spirit-filled. Coming into Meyer, we're going to go shopping, get some groceries or something. And I'm, I'm literally turning into my spot, and this guy cuts in front of me and takes my parking spot. Mmm. 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 Okay. Over here, I didn't care if I stabbed you or beat you or whatever. It did not matter so much, okay? There was Dangerville. I'm here. So I slam my truck door, and I'm going. And I got my plan. I'm going to get to his door before he can really get out. Dot him. Boom. Take him. Take his keys, throw them, shove them back in the car. I'm done. Okay. Piece of cake. As I'm going towards his door, Colleen knows I'm a man on a mission. <laughs> I hear, not distinguishable at all. It's Charlie's Brown teacher. It's just like, and all of a sudden I hear, Christians don't. Do that. And it was like a knife went through my heart. I went, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. And it was the Holy Spirit bringing revelation to my heart that I changed. And now I get a chance to walk it out. And I'm like frozen. Like, I, I'm paralyzed at this moment. And, and, and Mr. Parkinson's spot thief <laughs> gets out and is now very mouthy. And I have a knife and stuff. And I'm turning around. And I'm shaking, and I'm sure he thinks I'm afraid. I am literally shaking because the Holy Ghost has just arrested me, and I'm like so convicted that I am the worst sinner in the whole world, you know what I mean? And boy, and I get back in my truck, and I go, how about if you shop without me? I'm going to go park. <laughs> and I went, and I just start praying the Spirit, and I just said, Lord, forgive me. I don't know how out of control a person can be that he wants to beat somebody up for a parking spot, and I'm just repenting, and I'm just asking the Lord to minister to me. And he starts ministering to me in just really supernatural ways. And it was so cool. So cool. I mean, you know, I probably wasn't going to raise anybody from the dead back here. But in my life today, I've literally seen three dead people live. I have seen cancers go away. I have seen crippled people healed. And I have seen many, many miraculous things of God. Now, okay, I've been doing this for 40 years. I've seen a few of these things. It's not like I walk around like, you know, butterflies and miracles happen everywhere I go. And it's just like, here you go. You know what I mean? <laughs> things like that. But I have seen those things because I understand the word and faith. And I understand how to cooperate with the Holy Spirit in the word and faith when it arises. I've seen the gifts of the Spirit in operation and prophecies and different things like this. You will see more of that happening in, in, in a bit. There will be a lot more of that coming out of my life. You'll, you'll see that for sure and other people in this room. So here's the deal. When something attacks your life, the first response is probably going to be fear. Learn to ignore that. Learn to resist that because it's not God. Satan's trying to draw you away from God. Turn to the word of God, which will then give you confidence and faith. Draw closer to the Lord. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Get into the word, but now here's the deal. You need the Holy Spirit to hear the word. He needs to bring revelation to you for you to have faith. In the midst of that, you do all the natural things that you need to do to be able to get through this trial. Okay? You get through those things. You know, I've been broke more than once. Like, like when Colleen and I say we're broke, it's not like you would call broke. We're so broke at this point that we don't have any money in the bank and no food in the cupboards, okay? Like, we have been broke like that a few times, where at least one time that way, and then broke, broke, no money in the bank a few times, and boom, 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 and all that kind of stuff. Well, you can just all day long go, well, God meets all my need, according to his riches and glory, bless God.
tired. I'm sorry. <laughs> but what you got to do is go, Lord, show me the pathway to prosperity. Where did I mess up? And how do I change this? And you do it. Health-wise, Colleen and I take good care of our bodies. We're doing all kinds of things. And I just really think that that's good stewardship of my body to eat right, exercise, do all those things and do all those things so that I do have faith that I'm going to live long and that nothing coming against me can prosper. Amen. And there's all kinds of battles and things like that that you will do. But here's the thing. The first thing is, is you just submit to the Holy Spirit. Ask him where you went wrong. Ask him what's going on. What is my response? He will lead you to scripture. He'll lead you to wisdom. He'll lead you to all these things. And we've been talking about the Holy Spirit, and we looked at a few things. The Holy Spirit was hovering over the face of the earth. And then God said, let there be light. And he went into action. And all creation started to happen. We saw Gideon. Gideon. You mighty man of valor. He's hiding in a wine press, okay? So know this. When the Spirit of God speaks to you, he's going to call you up to your destiny, not your situation. Right. He is going to pull you out of that. And when you respond, it says that the Spirit of God came upon Gideon. He delivered them from the Midianites, okay? And, and so just remember that, that when you're hearing the Spirit of God, He's going to speak things over you, give you dreams and visions, and He's going to give you thoughts that are beyond where you're at, and He's going to call you up to your potential and up to your destiny. And if you'll cooperate with it, the Holy Spirit then will get involved. Faith without works is dead. I think one of my favorite stories is David. And uh, there's a lot of stories, but King David... You know, okay, so Samuel comes and says, hey, uh, you know, uh, bring out your sons. I'm going to anoint one of them, whatever. And, and, and so here's Jesse, and he brings his boys out. And then Samuel's going like, and Samuel has to do this. He goes, I know this might be an embarrassing question, but do you got any more? Oh, there's David, you know, but he's out there taking care of the sheep, right? David comes in, what Samuel do? Anoints him. So now David's anointed. You know what David does? Anointed as he is, he goes back and takes care of sheep. A lot to learn from this story. So now anointed David, really anointed to be king, is taking care of sheep. And that anointing, when a bear comes to take one of his sheep, the anointing rises up and he goes, no, no, no. These are my sheep. I'm responsible for these sheep and you're not taking that sheep. And he kills the bear. Lion comes. What does he do? Anointing comes in, rises up. He goes, no. And he just moves with that and kills a lion. Now, fast forward some time, here's Goliath defying the armies of Israel and taunting them and all this other kind of stuff, right? J guess where David's at? Sheep watching. Faithful to what God called him to do until God gave him another assignment, even though he was anointed. Most people mess up after God anoints them because they think that now they've got to go out and do something different than what they were doing. A lot of times people can't be faithful where they're at before God can take them to where they're going to go. And so now under that anointing, he got prepared to meet his destiny. And so now he goes and his father says, go check on what's happening. So he's going and he brings some snacks to his brothers and stuff like this. And they goes, who, he goes, who, he sees Goliath. Everybody else is in fear. What is fear? When I yield to fear, I'm separating myself from God. Here's anointed David, and he's coming in and going, who is, he's not even afraid. He's going, who is this uncircumcised Philistine to find the armies of the living God? You know what his next question is? What do you get if you kill him? The anointing will make you smart, too. <laughs> what do I get if I kill him? I ain't doing this for free. Y'all cowards. What am I going to get if I do? He goes to another person, goes to the next brother, goes to the next person that's hiding in fear and goes, what does a person get? Because what he just told me can't be true. Tells him the same thing. He goes, wow. He goes to another person. What? Those two guys are crazy. What happens to the guy that kills him? Boom, gets the same thing. So now David's in front of King Saul. You know what he says? I've taken care of my, my father's sheep. 
And a bear came, and the Lord delivered him into my hands. And a lion came, the Lord delivered him into my hands. He goes, this uncircumcised Philistine will be just like one of them. Right. <clears throat> Who's David relying on? God, and he's relying on the anointing. That made him be courageous when other people were afraid. We know what happened. It wasn't, it wasn't David's prowess with a sling, even though he might have been really good. He didn't have faith in his abilities. He had faith in God's abilities, but he put action to that faith, and the Holy Spirit showed up, just like with Gideon, just like with Saul, just like David. Just like, I mean, we can go on and on and on. There's so many stories. You will see continually. When you act, then the Holy Spirit empowers you. And he lets go of that thing, and guess what, man? I just bam, nails him, cuts off his head. Now I want you to ask this. Are you taking the Holy Spirit and the anointing that God has given you? Because every single person in this room is more anointed than David. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Why? You have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. The Holy Spirit only came upon him. That's why he messed up so much. He couldn't get born again. He, he, there was things that he could not overcome in his life because why? He wasn't born again. You and I get to get born again. That means we have the nature, the righteousness of God inside of us. We're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. The Holy Spirit comes and makes his place inside of us. In fact, so much so, Jesus said things like this. The things that I do, you will do also. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, I will do it. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be done. Mark 11, 23, 24. Whoever should stand on this mountain be removed to cast and see and will not doubt in his heart but believe the things what he says will be done unto him he says therefore whenever you stand praying believe that you receive it and you will have it these are some of the promises guys says you lay hands on the sick and what they will they do they will recover how much of that do you need to take captive to think like jesus and you might be back here like me just barely born again i knew nothing but i just start grabbing onto the word of god putting it into my life Grabbing the word of God, putting it into my life. Grabbing the word of God and putting it into my life. Amen? Amen. And so when I saw my friend laying in the road with a broken neck, not breathing, I went, Lord Jesus, you said lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So here it goes. And I laid hands on him and I called it forth and I did, you know, whatever. And then it was like, I can't look at this anymore. So I went off praying in tongues and just worshiping God. And by the time I got back, he didn't have a broken neck anymore. He was talking and he was, you know, he was alive. Because I did the word because it was the first thing that came to my mind because it was living in me. And then the Holy Spirit got involved. One of the first miracles I ever saw. Help, honey. I don't know what to do. You know what? You're looking at your watch. So we're bored now. So let's... <laughs> we're done. Can I just encourage? You can encourage. So faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Let me challenge you and encourage you, get into the Bible, start reading it, and start imagining it being true in your life. Because when those trials come, it's the word that is going to give you the strength to overcome. It's the word that you use to overcome those trials. It's, that, it's the imagination you had before the trial. Yes. That will cause you to triumph. You know, and also, when those small things come, Start using the word. It's like a bodybuilder. Who does bodybuilding here or likes to work out or lift weights? Okay, great. Did you start pumping weights like a hundred pound, you know, dumbbell? No. I mean, you start off maybe with the 10 or the five or the 25 or whatever, but you, it's like those trials. You push them away when they're small and that gets you stronger spiritually. Start off with that headache that comes. Mm -hmm. You know, if you need an aspirin, go for it, but you pray over it. Father, I thank you, I take this aspirin by faith that it's gonna work supernaturally great and I lay hands on my head, headache go in Jesus' name. Yeah, I remember doing that in our young years and we go, this aspirin's gonna work faster than it's ever worked in my life. I mean, that's just where we're at, man. It's just kinda like, I'm gonna do this and it's gonna work better in our body, my body than it has in any other human being 
ever in history. So you have to start small. Yeah. But attack it. Yeah. Because those small things will get bigger and bigger. Treat sin, sickness, poverty, anger, lust like it's the devil himself. Amen. Resist those things. Amen. Good preacher, Paul. Amen. It all starts with being born again. And I, wish, I just wish, I wish it was this way. I wish I could just say, we're going to pray this prayer and your life is just going to be great. <laughs> I've, been, I've been through so many trials in my life. I should be dead four times over in my own life. I've had like poverty come. We've had all kinds of things, all kinds of hardships, all kinds of things happen in our life. But you know what? That doesn't move us just the word of God when you're called to something great guess what needs to get you there the testing of your faith to do something great getting born again is this I yield my life and surrender it to Jesus Christ as Lord there is no other way you can pray a prayer but not get born again being born again is that I yield to you, Jesus, and I surrender my life. And it's that. When I got saved, I had demons in my life, and there was all kinds of things. And this was my literal prayer. So it's, and I'm just sharing this with you because it's not necessarily the verbiage. I just said, Lord, I don't even want me. If you want me, you can have me. I don't think I can live like these freaks. But if you just, I'll just do my best. I won't deny you. That's it. I'll just do my best. But don't expect much from me. If you can take me that way, I'll give you my life. I got so born again. I got instantly delivered and things like this. Why? You're not surrendering, saying I'm going to be perfect. You're just surrendering and saying, here's my life. I'm on a journey. And it's a relationship. God's not in relationship with going, I want you to be perfect. Then you can hang out with me. He's going, you are such a mess. You better hang out with me. Come on. Let's all, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I can help you with this. Amen. You know, it's more like that. And so you bring yourself with all your baggage and you go, here I am, Jesus. This is it. I surrender to you. And until you do that surrender, if you die, you will go to hell. When you surrender, then you get born again then hell can never have you. Bow your heads and close your eyes if you would, and I just want you to examine your life. I said a couple things. First of all, I said, if Jesus showed up, would you be, be repenting of anything? Why don't you take care of that one right now? Amen. If there's anything in your life right now that you just need to repent of, anything in your home that you need to get rid of or clean out or whatever in your mind and in your heart. I know there's at least one person in this room. I don't know who you are. I just know the situation that you have emotionally attached yourself to somebody that's not your spouse. You need to repent of that right now and give it to God. And you need to repent of that and break off that tie. There's somebody in this room saying, I'm not sure the Holy Spirit was speaking in tongues is for today. The Lord says, today I will feel you and you will know for sure, even with your doubts. If you want. We're going to pray a prayer of salvation and consecration. And so let's all say it together. And, and, and so that anybody doing it, they're not just feeling isolated. So let's just do this together and love on each other. Just say, Dear God, I believe Jesus is your son. I believe he was born of a virgin, that he lived a sinless life, that he died on the cross because of sin, and he paid the price for my sin. He went into hell, paid the price for my sin, 
when it was fully paid, he rose from the dead. You said in your word, if I would call Jesus my Lord, I would be saved. So Jesus, I surrender. Here I am, all my good, all my bad, I'm here to be with you. I choose you and I choose your kingdom. Thank you for receiving me. Help me to walk this out. Fill me with your spirit so I'd have the power to live this life. Thank you for receiving me. Thank you for forgiving me. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed right now, if you prayed that for the first time in this room, several people did in last service, would you just raise your hand right now for me, please, and just say, that's me. Yep, see your hand. Anybody else? Yep, see your hand. Good man, good decision. Anybody else? Yep, good decision. Anybody else? You can put your hands down now. Anybody else? Yeah. Okay. Now, nobody else, just the people that raise your hands. Would you look at me, please? I have Pastor Taylor here and Pastor Jacob here. I would love for you to talk to one of them after the service, and they're just going to help get you started on the right foot. Amen? Now, everybody look at me. Some of you would need to and probably want to be filled with the Holy Spirit with evidence of praying in tongues. I didn't teach on that. I will. I will teach you what that is, and it's not the freaky thing that maybe scared you when you were a kid or something like that. Like I said, he is supernatural. He can freak you out at times, but really it causes you to be normal, and it causes, and the Holy Spirit will help you to overcome sin. He'll give you supernatural gifts to be able to bless people with. That's what the Holy Spirit's job is. Now give it the job description of the Holy Spirit. But if you want to, come on up, and we'd love to pray with you. Other than that, Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for hanging out with me and love you. Thank you. I call you blessed. I call your families blessed. I call your marriages blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you. Be blessed. See you.